Welcome back guys. So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about texturing, lighting and modeling the prop. I chose this because it has, you know, engraved texture and this adjustable knot with the knurling effect. I want to show you guys how I made these things. Also talk about the new brush I created. So it's really exciting. Uh, so without wasting any time, let's just jump right in. So in this blocking stage for the upper part of the, you know, jaw of the pipe range, I'm using a cylinder and then trimming it in half because the shape of it as I'm seeing on the reference photo is you know semicircular and with the move brush I'm just shaping it and trying to match the reference with the trim tool I'm gonna fix the jagged edges I'm not really worrying about topology since it's a high poly model and I have to add a lot of details like texture and surface details later on just using the cell mask and then just using the gizmo tool I'm just modeling And then for the handle, I'm using again a basic cylinder like that. And for the wooden part of the handle, I'm gonna use, as you will see, I'm gonna use the tube tool. You could use the lathe tool as well, but there's just not one way of doing things. So with the tube tool and the radius turned on, just then I just duplicated it and created the lower part of the handle. I try to break the whole process down into several steps. So for the first one being the blocking stage. In this blocking stage, I will just simply, you know, use simple primitive shapes uh, to just block the thing in, as the name suggests, right? So I'm just placing uh, all the parts of the model and trying to see whether the, you know, the, the relative proportions are matching, whether the shape or silhouette matching. We often overlook this stage, sometimes even skip them, but it's extremely important that you don't skip that. So in this refining stage, pay really close attention to what I'm trying to do here. Since it's a irregular shape, I'm about to trim. I'm going to use the trim tool and under the trim tool, I'm going to use the polygon selection selection tool. It's, it's going to allow me to create, you know, these irregular shapes very easily. And then I'm simply going to click on that green button, green circle, as you see. And it's going to do the job for me. It's very, very easy and quick. And then to create that curved shape, I'm just, you know, masking the portion of it so that it doesn't influence this part. And I'm, I can freely work with this part, the curved part with the move brush. And then again, I'm using the trim tool and this rectangle selection to trim out that section as well. You know, the, the slot for the adjustable knot. And then I'm just voxel remaining them so that I can, you know, use the smooth brush to, uh, add some natural bevels since it's gonna make my model look a bit more natural and help me get rid of that uh, you know artificial look that often happens when the edges of an object is too sharp when you are making it in 3d you know adding that extra bit of beveling and stuff like that you know it's gonna make your model look a lot more realistic So I'm repeating the process again. I'm using the polygon uh, selection as uh, again to, to perform the trimming for the lower jaw, right? And then I'm using the smooth tool again. Now for the screw, I'm just using a sphere and masking half of it and then scaling it down with the gizmo tool. Uh, then I'm just scaling it down and duplicating it and simply you know, rotating it in the other direction. Now this is a thin piece of metal. I don't know what it's called. 
I'm just making it with the you know tube tool uh, so since it's easy to you know manipulate and then I'm just turning on the profile and adjusting its thickness in the profile section this is a really really powerful and good tool I can't get enough of the tube tool you know so I'm just repeating the process again for the for the other thin piece of metal that's over here also I think I should mention that even though you are not seeing my references on the screen right now but I'm using a lot of them uh, I, I encourage you to collect as many as you can in order to understand the structure of the model you are making I am actually looking at a lot of references from many different angles, uh, many pictures of, you know, wooden handled pipe wrench. Okay, so detailing is the most, uh, you know, uh, interesting part for me. I'm just adding more polygons since I have to add, you know, more details uh, like surface details and stuff like that. In the, as you can see here, I'm just using the regular mask and alpha for the thread part of the of the job so now what i'm making you see on screen is what i call a cutter which is what i'm gonna use to you know perform boolean operation to create the teeth of the jaw both for the upper and the lower jaw Then I'm simply using the cell mask to you know, rectangle selection to create that depression that you see on the, low, on the on the jaw. I'm as usual. I'm using the smooth brush to create the you know bevel. Now I'm creating a text alpha for the stamp brush. Uh, and with this stamp brush I'm gonna add quite easily the engraved text and on top of that I'm gonna use the smooth brush to make it look natural to create the knurling effect on the adjustable knot I actually made a special brush just for this purpose and then I repeated the same process to add the number 10 So after adding this primary surface details, I started to add, you know, the damages like, you know, the, the cracks here and there and the cheap edge chips and things like that uh, with my crack brush, sometimes using the flattened brush. And these things really add characters to your, you know, prop. I like to give my props a backstory. Is it being used by some someone who is an agent mechanic or something like that? It will always help your prop to you know come alive. That's just my approach. Also, it's uh, quite useful to add these surface details on separate layers. You know that way you will be able to control the intensity of it of the surface details quite easily and that's the reason the layer option is there actually so if you are adding surface details or some kind of dirt texture it's always a good idea to do it on a new layer all right so now we have arrived at the last and the most interesting stage of the whole process texturing it's also in my opinion the most important stage since uh, this is the final result others will see you know no matter how good your modeling is if your texturing is not up to the mark you know the whole thing will fall apart so uh, you should not take this stage lightly 
So the first thing in this stage I do is turn the mat cap to PBR and then they just start start applying materials. For example, the upper parts of the pipe range are mostly made of metal. So I will just select those parts and just apply a material, metal material. And then for the wooden part, I will, you know, apply a material that's not metallic and the roughness is not like too shiny. And I'll just uh, keep these things in mind. And then just I, I'll just add lights to, you know, experiment with the lights to make sure that it's well lit. Then on top of that, I will just add dark textures, you know, even though the, the, the prop is relatively new, as you can see, it's not old rusty model, but, you know, it will have some sort of dark on top of it. That's just what happens in real life. If you pay attention to real life props and stuff. Uh, so that you know helps add an extra bit of realism to your work I know I mentioned this before but looking at reference really can make your prop you know look a lot better instead of just making things up so that's a very important thing to keep in mind. And finally, as far as the lighting is concerned, I just play around with the settings. The general rule of thumb is that make your prop look good. That's the ultimate goal. So play around with the lighting, you know, it's completely uh, up to you how you want to make your prop look. Thanks a lot for uh, watching my tutorial. I'll make more videos like this. So if you don't want to miss them, please consider subscribing. I mean, no pressure. And thank you again for watching.